Dad. Breakfast's ready. Just a second, dear. Oh, I'll get it. Mm, hello. Good morning, Vern. Good morning, Sandra. I haven't seen you for two whole days. I've missed you. Oh, I, I've been so busy lately. I understand, Vern. But I would like to see you, even if it's only for an hour or so. Maybe lunch? Well, what about today at 12.30? At my office? Wonderful. See you then, Vern. Bye, dear. Goodbye, Sandra. Dad, come on. Uh, coming, dear. Who was that on the phone? Well, it was, uh, well, it's, uh, it's a little surprise I was saving for you. I'll, I'll tell you all about it when I make sure. Sure? Sure of what? Oh, it's one of those things a man has to make certain about. I can't explain now, but I'll tell you this much. It's one of those things that makes a man feel 20 years younger. The world becomes a wonderland. Birds sing. The breeze is a melody. She said I had baby blue eyes. Holy mackerel! Dad, give me a hint. Animal, vegetable, or mineral? And what color hair does she have? Oh, don't ask me now, honey. But tell me, will you welcome her as your mother? Oh, Dad, I'm so happy for you. Good morning, Mr. Albright. Good morning, Freddy. I thought I'd stop by and have a little breakfast. Oh, fine, boy, fine. Go right in and Margie will fix you a breakfast fit for a king. Bye, Dad. Bye, honey. So long, Freddy, my boy. He hasn't treated me like that since the time I made up that story about my only having 24 hours to live. Oh, Freddy, it's finally happened. Before it was just a friendship, but now it's love. And I think they're going to get married. No. You mean your dad and Roberta? Well, of course. Who else? He was just like a kid. Didn't want to talk about it. All embarrassed. She probably won't want to talk about it either, so don't force the issue. Hi, Roberta. Morning, Margie. Ready? Hi, Roberta. Oh, I'm so happy. You are? Caught any interesting fish lately, Roberta? Fish? Oh, as a matter of fact, I did do a little fishing recently. Oh, Roberta, I'm so happy. Happy? About a two-pound trout? <laughs> <laughs> two-pound trout. Oh, that's wonderful. I'd like to have seen the look on his face when you landed him. Well, as I recall, it was something like this. <laughs> Are you going to keep working? Why, yes, I hadn't thought of quitting my job over it. Now, that's the kind of a woman I admire. Roberta, congratulations. And I'd like to say something I've wanted to say for a long time. Welcome, Mother. Mother? I thought there was something goofy about this conversation. Margie, you're apparently talking about the look in your father's eye that says that he's been shot with Cupid's arrow. Well, it's so obvious. Well, you're right and wrong. One hit, but with the wrong miss. The wrong miss? He met a girl at the country club dance last week. Her name is Sandra Fleming. She's tall and brunette. And if I do say so myself, she's darn good looking. Well, he took you to the dance. How'd he meet her? Oh, he didn't meet her. She met him. It was all so beautifully gooey that I got Frank Craig to bring me home. Oh, Roberta, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I've still got my youth. And it's a wonderful kind of youth. The kind that's mellowed with age. I wish your father all the best. Sounds kind of funny to me. The way Roberta said it, it sounds like that girl went out of her way to pick Dad up. Yeah. Why doesn't anything like that ever happen to me? Hi, Mr. Honeywell. All right, how much longer is this going to go on? I'm sorry, Mr. Honeywell. Now get a clean copy of that contract and make it snappy. 
What's the matter with you? You've been acting like a lovesick schoolboy for a week. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Honeywell. Now, I want that contract ready by lunchtime. 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 Oh. Cut that out and get that contract ready. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, hello. I'm sorry. My dear young lady, it was all my fault. Anything I can do for you? Why, yes, if you please. I'm looking for Mr. Vern Albright. Well, this is his office, but I think he's quite busy right now. Oh, but I'm sure he'll see me. I'm sure he will, Miss... Uh... Fleming. Well, Miss Fleming, I think it'll be all right. Thank you very much. What a wonderfully charming man. Uh, what's good? Vern, I didn't realize how important you are. You have a perfectly lovely office. Oh, it's nothing really. It uh, fits me. You have such an important job. Executive Vice President. That's right. How wonderful. I've always wanted to know a big man like you. So this is Sandra Fleming. I knew you were a smart man, Byrne. The minute I looked at you, I said to myself, now there's an intelligent man. <laughs> I'm ready for lunch now, Byrne. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, where would you like to go? Well, I, I know you'll laugh at me, but I've always wanted to go to the Walton Sky Room. Of course, it's terribly expensive, and if you'd rather not go... Oh, Sandra, I'd take you anywhere. <sighs> Vern, darling. Oh, hello there. I, I didn't know you were here. No, I'm sure you didn't. Who is this, Vern, darling? Your secretary? Uh, I'll call you later. It, please do. Why, that... Mr. Honeywell, do you know what she is? Well, she's a humdinger, if you ask me. Can't you see, Mr. Honeywell? That girl has all the earmarks of a gold digger. Uh, let's go to the Walton Sky Room for lunch. A dollar for soup. Uh, slightly higher if you want it in a bowl. Oh, what a perfectly lovely office you have. I've always wanted to know a big man like you. Sandra, I'd do anything for you. Are you sure she's a gold digger, Margie? Well, I'm almost sure. I'm going to do some checking, and if... Mr. Honeywell, if I can convince you that that girl is, is just trying to hook my father for his money, will you help me? You can count on that. Thanks. I'll call you. Gold digger or not, when a girl smells like that, she's a humdinger. Mmm! Man, dig that crazy vapor. I got all the dope from the newspaper files. She's been divorced three times, and she got a great big fat settlement each time. So she's a gold digger. Your father's old enough to know what he's doing. I thought you cared a lot for him, and you're not even willing to do anything to help him. Margie, if it were anyone but your father, can't you see? It's not for me to get mixed up in anything like this. Anything like what? Margie, I know you like a book. You have more up your sleeve than your elbow. Well, you're wrong. I haven't been able to think of anything. But I've got to show Dad that she's just after his money. Why don't you tell him? Do you think he'd believe me? Of course not. You'd certainly have no problem if he didn't have any. Girl? No, money. Well, hoopty do that's it. That's what? The idea I've been looking for. And you're going to be in on it. Margie, I said I wouldn't have anything to do with... Do you think you really could break them up? I'm positive. What'll we do? Well, we'll get Mr. Honeywell and Freddie. Hmm. And I think we'll need an actor. And, of course, we've got you and me. Well, I'm not sure of the plot, but it certainly sounds like a heck of a cast. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I want you to know that I'll welcome Sandra as a member of the family. Oh, I hadn't planned on your finding out so soon, but now that you have, I'm happy that you're taking it this way. Why didn't you introduce me when she came out of here today? I'll introduce you to her, but you sort of caught me off balance. You know, having a daughter just past 21 and... I understand. Dad, let's have Sandra over for dinner tonight. Have her over? Yes, I want to meet her and get to know her. Say, that's a wonderful idea. Oh, honey, you love her. I know I will. I know I will. Dad, could we hire a butler, you know, to make it nice and formal and I won't have to serve? Let's make a real wonderful impression on Sandra. Oh, baby, you're one in a million. <laughs> sure, go ahead, hire a butler. The sky's the limit on everything. Uh, you call Sandra. I've got a lot of things to get ready for tonight. Okay, I'll see you at dinner. Everything's set except hiring the actor to play the butler, and I'll attend to that right now. Fine. I'll see you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. They're here. Maybe Miss Fleming will fall for me. After you, Sandra. Thank you, Vern, darling. Hello. Hello. Uh, Sandra, this is my daughter, Margie. Oh, yes, the young lady at the office. This is a pleasure. It's so nice to meet you, Margie. See how nice she is, Margie? Please come in, Sandra. Oh, hello. Honeywell, Roberta. Sandra, this is Roberta Townsend. So nice to see you again. Oh, yes. That was a lovely dance, wasn't it? And I believe you know Mr. Honeywell. Charmed, I'm sure. The pleasure is all mine. <laughs> Crazy. Oh. <laughs> Won't you be seated? What's the meaning of this? I thought it was going to be private. Don't be angry with Margie, Vern. I invited myself. I, I want to be friends. Oh, wonderful, Roberta. We'll be good friends. I'll get it. Oh, why don't you take it in the den, Dad? It's probably for you anyway. All right, honey. Hello. Police operator here. Is Monsieur Albright there? Uh, this is Vernon Albright speaking. Say, what is this? I thought telephone operators are all women. Ah, but Monsieur, this is France. We have the call from Berlin. Will you hold the line, please? Berlin? I don't know anyone in Berlin. It will take a few moments to make the connection, Monsieur. You will wait, yes? Yes, yes, I'll wait. Do you care for another, sir? I don't care if I do. Very tasty, my boy. Thank you, sir. My grandmother's private recipe. They keep her going, you know. <laughs> Carlton. Yes, miss? Excuse me. Carlton, there's something on your back. I wish you'd be more discreet. Oh, I am sorry, miss. I didn't realize. But the other uniform did wear out. Well, turn around so I can take the tag off. Tag, miss? <laughs> Thank you, miss. He's so forgetful. <laughs> Hey, lady, will you take your pots and pans out of the oven? But I have company for dinner. Look, lady, we already given you a month's notice and you ain't made no payment. The boss says today for sure. Well, can't it wait until after dinner? Well, how long you guys gonna be here? Uh, let's discuss it in the kitchen. <laughs> be something wrong with this connection. Hello, hello? Hello, Monsieur Albright. Are you still there? Yes, yes, I'm still here. Oh, I'm so sorry, Monsieur. We have the difficulty with the connection to Berlin. We will call you back. You will wait at this number, yes? Yes, I'll be here. Oh, 
Oh, here comes Dad. Well, I think we can eat now. Who was it, Dad? Uh, Berlin, France. Do we know anyone in Berlin? Uh, shall we go into the dining room? You have a beautiful apartment, Margie. Must be terribly expensive. Yes. Isn't it too bad? Too bad? Oh, there I go, and I promised Dad I wouldn't say a word about it. Forget it. Coming, Margie? Here, dear. Sit here. Uh, are you comfortable? My, what a lovely centerpiece. Oh, thank you. It's been in the family for years. It was my mother's. <laughs> oh, uh, that must be my call. Well, will you excuse me? Mm, hello. Monsieur Albright, Paris here. We will try again to get through to Berlin. Are you there, Berlin? Herr Albright, this is Berlin calling. I will try to connect you with your party. All right, I'll wait. You know who's calling? Jawohl. Schultz, Schultz and Baroni. Stockbrokers. Baroni? Yeah. Mr. Jones wants to speak with you. One moment, please. Margie, this gentleman wishes to see you. Oh, Mr. Barnum, what are you doing here? Ah, uh, there it is. Sorry, Miss Albright, but I really must take it back now. But take it back? Yes, when Mr. Hoyle found out it was missing, he gave me the Dickens, and I really didn't know what to say to him. Of course, I didn't dare tell him that I'd lent it to you for the evening. But, but it's ours. Well, it did belong to you at one time, and it will again, of course, if you ever redeem it. But I must take it back now. Oh. Schultz, Baroni, Jones, are you there? What's happening? So sorry, mein Herr. The Schultzes are out. Baroni is in conference. Jones is at this club. We will call you back. That will be just fine. I'm sorry about the interruption. Soup, sir? Uh, yes, Carlton. Ahem. Uh, um. uh, yes, Carlton? I'd like to see you a moment, miss. Now? But we're eating. Uh, this is a private matter, miss. I'd like to see you before we continue the meal. Oh. Excuse me. <laughs> Please, Carlton, you'll get your money. I'm sorry, Miss Albright, if I don't get paid. Uh, isn't this a beautiful tablecloth? Oh, yes, it's uh, something I picked up in Paris. Really? It's not as though we can't afford to pay you. My understanding was before the meal. It uh, certainly is a lovely evening, isn't it? Vern, I hope the forms be account goes through. I sure would hate to lose it. It would mean the end of Honeywell and Todd. I'll get the money somewhere. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me. What's the trouble about his money? Sir, I want my money. Well, why didn't you pay him? I gave you the money today. Well, I spent the money for food for tonight so we could impress Sandra. Oh, for crying out loud. I, I can't seem to find my wallet. I, I know I had it. Uh, I'll pay you later, Carlton. I promise you. Promises. Always promises. I'd better get back to the guests. You take care of Carlton. Hello? I want to speak to Mr. Honeywell. This is Mr. Formsby. Well, this is Vern Albright. I don't care if it's King Todd. I want to speak to Mr. Honeywell. Yes, sir. Uh, just a moment, sir. Mr. Honeywell, it's Mr. Formsby for you. Well, I wonder what he's calling for. Hello? Mr. Formsby? What? Oh, sir, you can't mean that. What? Oh, no, no, no. You'll sue? Uh, wait, now wait, please. Yeah. Oh, no. We're finished, ruined. What do you mean? Frederick's made a mess of everything. You mean Formsby wouldn't sell the stock? That's right. I'm sorry, Vern, but this is the end of Honeywell and Todd. What? I'm too old to start all over again, but maybe you can find something else. Does this mean you're unemployed, Vern? I... I... 
Oh, Dad, something will turn up. It's not as though we were completely broke. I still have a little money in the bank. Somehow, I just don't feel hungry anymore. I say, Wilson here, is anyone about? I wonder who that is. Freddy! Uh, are you crazy? Dad, it's finally happened. Yes, what little brain he had is snapped. I guess we'd better go along with him. I never thought we'd have to do this. Well, all right, with Sandra in there, I don't want anything more to go wrong tonight. Dad, you're right. Why, it's Cousin Freddy. Why, why, yes, of course. How are you, Freddy, my lad? Uncle Vern, it's good to see you again. And dear, dear Cousin Margaret. <sighs> Dinner so early? How provincial. Oh, my dear, you are looking charming. Delighted to see you again. Cousin Freddy, we didn't expect you. Oh, some tiresome business with my American brokers. I tried to settle things by cable. Hunting season, you know. Oh, I say, what's up? You chaps do seem a bit down. Oh, Freddy, the most horrible thing has happened. Dad just lost his job. Am I to understand that Uncle Vern was someone's employee? Mine. Oh, how revolting. Margaret, Vern, may I be of some financial assistance? Well, we did have a little trouble with Carlton. Mr. Albright doesn't seem to be able to find his wallet. Is that so? Will you just let me take care of this immediately? You don't have to do that. I'll pay him. Tut tut, old man. It means nothing to me. Nothing at all. How's that? Oh, thank you, sir. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, Sandra. This is my cousin Frederick. Uh, Sir Frederick. <clears throat> oh, yes, Sir Frederick. Oh, I say Gad. I mean Gad. I say, Margaret, I do approve your choice of friends. <gasps> Charmed, I'm sure. Uh, just who is this young lady, Uncle Vern? She happens to be a very, very dear, dear friend of mine. Oh, I say, young lady, would you be kind enough to accompany me on a gay tour of the better clubs? I'd love to. But, Freddy, she's with your Uncle Vern. Well, the old boy has good taste. <laughs> Here, I trust this will tide you over until tomorrow. Thanks. Uh, shall we go? Oh, quite, quite. Where did he get all that money? Say, there's something funny going on around here. Don't you see, Dad? She's only interested in money. What are you talking about? Ask her to come back. Oh, Sandra? Yes, Vern? I thought you were going to spend the evening with us. Well, don't you think I ought to get to know all the family? Good night, Uncle Vern. I guess I've made a fool of myself. Now that I'm broke, she doesn't want me. Broke? Why, you're not broke, my boy. That was just a gag. Gag? We just wanted to show you what kind of a girl she is. And your wallet's in your bedroom where I hid it. Well, of all the mean, underhanded... Of all the wonderful people. <sighs> Roberta, there's the dance at the club tomorrow night. Coax me. I accept. Say, she changed her brand. This is night blooming rumble seat. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your main source of income. Do you really want to know? Oh, yes. Very well. Here you are, my dear. State Department of Unemployment. I go every Tuesday. Why? That girl has no sense of humor. <laughs> 